Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Lindsay and this is my friend Mitch. Would you like to say hi to everyone, Mitch? Hi everyone. Okay, um, so we have been friends for, oh goodness, like eight or so years now. Would you like to yep. tell me your side of the story, how we've known each other and whatnot? Sure, so in 2014, um, we went to the same college and we met probably like in the first week or so, or first couple of weeks. Something like that, Some, yeah. Something like that, anyway. And um, my first memories of Lindsay were her being grumpy and complaining about things. Sounds about and right. nothing's changed. No. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Lindsay's grown a lot since I first met her. And Mitch has grown a lot too. Yes, I'm still short, but in other ways I've grown. Yeah, I wasn't going to say it, but... <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay, so the reason why I actually want to um, interview Mitch today is because, um, as many of you know, I've been going on this journey of um, learning about kingdom marriage and waiting on God to bring me a husband at some point. And spoiler alert, this is not that person. <laughs> Um, this is just a really good friend, um, but my friend Mitch here has also begun this journey of um, engaging with God on this topic over the past few years as well. And so um, his journey is quite different to mine and quite different to other people that I've interviewed as well. But I really want to share with you guys um, what his experience has been and hopefully that will be a blessing and a benefit to you guys as you continue on your journey as well. Um, so... Can you give me a little bit of backstory about uh, sort of your relationships and, and kind mm -hmm. of what led you to this point? All right. So if we, if we yeah look at the beginning of the journey. So in 2017, I, um, I met a girl and about a week after I met her, we were dating and I was meeting her parents. Um, it was a, a very quick um, progression there. Um, and, you know, that was, you know, going strong i guess for about 18 months we were at a point where you know we thought we were going to get married both our mothers thought we were going to end up getting married but then things kind of fizzled out there and um i was left feeling you know pretty hurt pretty like broken but i just really felt god just kind of picking me up and holding me in his arms and saying hey i, I got like all the all this stuff you know in store for you um i, I got like a whole new plan for you i'm going to get you like you know someone who's going to be like a a really good fit for you for a relationship and that's kind of where that journey started for me yeah so i remember um in our friendship we would talk a lot for like the, like many years and mm. then when you got this girlfriend we kind of weren't hanging out as much anymore mm. and then um and then I think it was the day that she broke up with you. I got a phone call after a very long time. It wasn't the day that she broke up with me, but okay. the day that I realized that it wasn't going, just going on a break. Because right. the, the way that she said it, I, I was sure that she was just saying, let's just go on a break. Mm. Um, she didn't explicitly say the words break up. Mm. Um, I later found out that that's what she intended it to mean. But mm. um, yeah, and then, you know, she, basically her, her thing was like, you know, I just don't have a time for a boyfriend right now. So I was like, okay, that hurts. And then a few months later, um, you know, we found time to hang out and she'd evidently found time for a different boyfriend. So I was like, okay. Um, well then. Yep. And then mm -hmm. it was that night. Um, so I, I guess the, the, the day of it feeling like an official um, full end to the relationship. Um, yeah, I was just, you know, I'd gone down to, to, the, to um, a lake near where I live to just kind of, you know, pray and, and talk to God about, about it. And God was just like, hey, Mitch, call Lindsay. And I was like, what? And, and then God was like, do it, do it. So I, I reluctantly called Lindsay and we had a good chat. And she was telling me about her journey with, mm. you know, God, God preparing someone for her and her mm. for someone. And I was like, all right, what's God got in store for me next? Yeah. Yeah, I um, I didn't know what else to tell him, so I was just like, well, that's that really sucks for you that she just dumped you like that. Um, but yeah, this is what God is doing in my life from what I've you know started to see, and this was only a few months into the time where I thought I knew who I was going to marry, um, and 
yeah, I think it was only a few months in, and I was like really excited. I was like, this is what God's doing. This is all the the um, all the things that are lining up at the moment, and that seemed to really encourage Mitch. And so, mm. yeah, what did you start doing? Um, what was what was the next step for you once you found that encouragement? Well, the next step was figuring out what I was looking for. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, I, I, I wrote kind of like a, a list of criteria, a list of things I was looking for. Um, at one stage, I had like a really long one. There was like 70 points or something. Um, so, some of them were just kind of like a bit of like a superfluous detail, but uh, I was trying to be really thorough and really comprehensive in terms of what I was looking for. But then there was also another big step of that was submitting that in prayer and, and letting go of the things that God was telling me to let go of and just really helping um, and letting God help me to refine that list into what you know what he had in store for me as well yeah so how how did that happen like how did you go through that process how did i go through that process uh because i remember we had a lot of phone calls since then and mm. every time we talk we talk for a long time we can talk for like two or three hours straight sometimes um and so some of the details are a bit fuzzy but Every time we talked, there was like a bit of a progression and mm. a bit of a change. Something had been refined or added to or, yeah. Yeah. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah, so, so, so one mechanism that, that God used is what I refer to as trailers. Yes. So, so, so with movies, you know, you have the movie that's going to come out, but you have trailers that come out beforehand to tell you what the movie's going to be like. And I felt that, you know, one, one way that God was telling me about, you know, this person, he this kingdom spouse he had for me and uh, he, he'd give me like new trailers little, little snippets of, of human interaction to mm. kind of tell me a little bit about what that would be like can you give me one um, or two examples of those trailers one example was i was just taking the train home from work one day and there was this girl sitting like you know kind of diagonally across from me talking to, to some guy um I'm not, I'm not sure what relation it was between them like if if he was like if she was a carer for him or if he was just some stranger but just um, yeah, um, I suspect that there might have been some kind of like, you know, mental disabilities going on with this guy, but just like the patience and care that she expressed with him, just, I was just like, I really like that. Mm. I, I, I want a girl that has these kinds of, you know, character qualities. Mm. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's, that's one example. Um, uh, there, there's been a number, number of just girls I've, you know, be, been friends with, um, sometimes even just for short periods of time. Um, but I've just kind of, you know, just noticed, yeah, character qualities that, that I just like, I like that. Mm -hmm. And one, one particular example, one of the more recent examples was a, um, a girl that I met that, um, yeah, was you know, involved in doing music recording. I'm massively into music and, you know, re recording and sharing songs I've written is like, you know, part of like my ministry and stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, th this girl was just kind of like asking me about that and asking me about like what microphones I use. And I was like, Okay, so, so, so God can, you know, bring girls to me who will ask me about stuff like what microphones I use if, if, that, if that's what, you know, God wants from me. Just, just kind of God proving to me that he really does understand who I am and my character and, you know, what fits well with me. Mm. And also proving that he has the power to bring these people to me. Mm. I just want to circle back actually on that point mm -hmm. to to your list that had like 70 different points. Can you just give us a few examples of what might've been on that list? Oh, a few examples. Uh, one thing was that I was more explicit about the spiritual things I was looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing was just kind of in reflecting in the relationship that I just come out of. She was still a Christian, but had some, some differences of belief in there. And I was thinking, yeah, I think I want someone who's like, knew more closely aligned with my beliefs. Mm -hmm. I guess more theologically and perhaps denominationally aligned. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. That's a really practical thing. And, and we see that where in the Bible, it talks about not being unequally yoked. Mm. So I guess you had experience with somebody who was from a different denominational background mm. um, and decided that that wasn't quite helpful. No. Yeah. 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 And another thing was that, um, yeah, also just in terms of, you know, her spiritual qualities, like, yeah, she was just not comfortable praying in front of me. Mm. And when I first met her, I was just like, surely, you know, o over time she'll open up about that and be more comfortable about that. But it never changed. Mm. Okay. And, and sometimes you can go into a relationship expecting, you, you know, that certain things will change, but you don't want to count on that. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, one of the other people that I've uh, done an interview with that you guys might have seen uh, was uh, my friends Harley and Eliza, and they actually pointed out this particular point about praying together as a couple. That's mm. really, really important for intimacy in the relationship and openness and honesty. So if you can pray together in front of each other, it's actually really important to to be able to do that because you're being open with God, but you're also being open with your partner and there's nothing hidden. There's no like confessing secret sins only to God, but the spouse doesn't know about it. No, it, it actually helps with that honesty. Um, so yeah, it's really important mm. that particular point. And it's something um, I'm really glad you brought that up because these are things for us to be watching out for in that person that we're interested in, um, or we think that God might be leading us to being with them, but we actually need to, I guess, start discerning, hey, is this what I'm just thinking? Or mm. is this something that's from God? Like, does this actually line up biblically? Is this um, a person with good character? And are they are they willing to be open and to grow and to be, you know, doing spiritual things? So I think we're going to get into that a little bit more in a minute. So, Mitch, um, mm-hmm. you were telling me earlier before we started recording about mm. these different stages of waiting. Would you like to unpack that for us right now? Sure. So, so this is something that I've just kind of been, you know, piecing together on that, a way to, to frame my experiences in a way to, to share what I've learned along the way. Um, and so I've kind of break down the, the journey that I've been on so far into a couple of different stages. So first stage is, you know, having no idea what's going on, just kind of, you know, being like, all right, I want to, you know, meet someone pretty and nice sometime. And, and that's kind of about as deep as it goes into a second stage of, um, having a more determined effort to try and figure out, you know, God's uh, leading for, for you. And um, yeah, just kind of, you know, figuring out, you know, what you're looking for and submitting that to God and letting him kind of, you know, work on that. And then, you know, third stage is then when um, something I've entered into more recently is when, you know, you have like a fairly solid list of what you're looking for. But then it's a matter of, you know, growing in yourself to become what this kind of person would be looking for. Mm, so now it's no longer so much about that other person and, and what they should be like. But now mm. it's for you to be living up to that kind of standard. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, now, I think you're telling me about um, a message that you received along these lines. Would you mm-hmm. like to share that with us? So this was a, um, a Saturday afternoon. Um, I was hanging at home with my mum and... Um, this is a couple of months ago now? A few months ago now, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I normally would have you know, gone out and um, spent time with friends, but um, yeah, I just had to be at home um, this particular day. Um, and I was just wanting to you know, spend, spend a bit of time with my mum. Uh, she, she quite likes movies. I'm not much of a movie watcher, but I like making videos. And I was like, okay, you know, I want to spend time with mum. So maybe we can watch a movie together, um, but so that I'm also kind of, you know, getting something out of it, I'll ask her if you can find one that's you've got good cinematography so I can just kind of, you know, watch it and kind of like, you know, learn from, from how these professionals have, you know, shot a beautiful looking piece of video and kind of learn from that on how to improve my own craft. Mm. Okay, mm. cool. So what was, I guess, a really basic breakdown of the movie and how did it lead you to this message? Sure. So, so this was... Um, yeah, a very unusual kind of movie in the, in the sense that it just kind of breaks all of the, you know, Hollywood expectations. Um, it, was, it was basically like a, a love story where, you know, um, guy meets girl, but guy is not worth... Like, He's a not, jerk. He was a jerk, right? Yeah. He, he kind of sucked. Um, and, you know, the, the Hollywood thing is often the kind of like, you know, oh, oh he'll you know, do some grand romantic gesture and make it up to her, but... Um, yeah, that, that's not how it played out. And she ended up um, being with someone who was, you know, comparatively boring and unexciting, but who, who was there for her and who treated her, her well. Mm. And they ended up growing into a, a really strong and beautiful connection. Mm. So just kind of through this, I just kind of saw this concept of, of worthiness, of mm. um, these things that we might consider boring, like, you know, having a stable income, having a home, um, that are really important in terms of actually taking care of someone. If, you, if you're if you looking for, for your kingdom spouse, you're not looking for someone to just kind of you know, be with for a few months or a few years. You're looking for someone to spend the rest of your life with. Mm. You know, depending on how, how old you are, you could be well and truly looking at 
decades. Mm. And that's something that can be kind of hard to really fully grasp and, and internalize and, and let that inform your decision. So yeah. this kind of really got me thinking about this yeah, concept of, of worthiness and of kind of stepping up in personal growth. Sure. And so I guess in more practical terms, mm. uh, you, you mentioned like having a stable income and having mm. a house and, and all these kind of things. Um, I guess really growing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, like we met when we were 18, we we're at uni and over the past eight years now, we've been having to grow up and step into this adult world really. And like, it's still like a weird thought for me. Like I have to have an income and support myself and I don't know how I would ever go with, you know, I'm glad I'm the woman and I don't have quite the financial pressure, like in like society at least mm. when I get married, I can kind of just, hope that the man looks after that <laughs> more um but you are the man in this situation that's right um so you really actually have to start thinking about these things like what mm. is that going to look like um, yeah. how are you going to support a wife and kids and and whatever else like ministry that you're doing as well mm. yeah so um just thinking practically through what is kingdom marriage actually going to be like um on a practical level like it's not just this romantic thing that God's going to lead you to this wonderful human that is like your soulmate or something and that you're going to do like kingdom assignment type of stuff together. No, you're going to actually live together as well, like just do day-to-day -day life. And so now Mitch is starting to think, okay, how, how does that play out and mm. what do I need to start preparing in order for that to become a reality? So... Mm. Um, do you want to share the message at this point um, or you got something else? Sure. I think, I think mine's just like a, a short preamble in terms of, yeah. you know, what, what, how, how this came to me. Yeah. Cause I think that's a very, a very important part of the yeah. process. Yeah. Um, cause yeah, you know, God loves to speak to us, but also mm -hmm. Satan wants to tempt us. Mm -hmm. And, um, yes. Yeah, so, so when I was writing out this message, you know, first off it was, you know, found on, on principles that, you know, uh, agree with what the Bible teaches. Um, and secondly, like the, the message itself, like, you know, points to God as, as sovereign Lord. Mm. And so I, I think this is just kind of an you know, important thing to keep in mind. If you feel like you're getting a spiritual message, then, you know, the Bible says test every spirit. So just, yep. yeah. Yep. Cool. So I'll just read this out for you. Be you a man who is worthy of her affections, a man who is strong enough to wait, a man who stays true to his convictions, a man who finds peace in the storm, a man of good courage and cheer, a man who can be the sure anchor of his home. She is too quick to be ensnared by the bandying of empty words, too fast for a liar to keep pace with. She will give you wings to carry you when you are weak, that you may rise above troubled waters. Give her your secrets and she will keep them safe. Fear not, she will be sufficient help for you. A woman who fears the Lord, who can find? She is a jewel more precious than kingdoms. Count not the cost, but let devotion to the Lord be your subscription. Seek the Lord, and you will find her also. The God of love is not callous toward your yearnings, but will reward those which are good and reprove those which are not. The Lord will withhold no good thing from his children. Tarry not in the good work, for on this road blessings abound. Remember, you are a chosen child of God. He has not called you to that which he will not enable you to do. Go forth and bear fruit. The hour of the harvest is come. Be not dismayed for the world. The God who works all things for good to his faithful servants will bring forth a ripe plentitude in due time. If I but walk in his ways and stray not. The time is nigh. Will you reach out with both hands and to take up the plow? For in this very field you shall find her. I actually like that last bit where it's talking about, I guess, doing work for God. Mm. And then in that space, you're going to find the kingdom spouse. Absolutely. A lot of the time um, in the message, messages that we hear here on YouTube about kingdom marriage, uh, we hear like, um, you're going to find your kingdom spouse and then you're going to start kingdom assignment work together. Mm. But the message that Mitch has received is like, no, you you need to be doing the work for God. And then in that space, then you will find your wife, essentially. And we see this like even set out in the Garden of Eden, where God placed Adam in the garden. He gave him a job to do, he gave him instructions. And then he created Eve and brought Eve to him 
as he was already in the purpose that God had given him. So I see um, that is a really biblical principle. Right mm. there. Like we need to be serving God and not waiting around for this person to come along so that we can do the work, but we need to be just being faithful and, and diligent and doing what God has called us to do. And then at his perfect timing, he will bring that person to us. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's really cool. Thank Did you, you have anything else in that message that you wanted to, to elaborate on or, or share your thoughts about? Yep. Um, so a couple of things. Um, one thing is that I received this message and then it was, wasn't really until a few months later that I realized what stage of the journey that I'm in. Mm. Um, and, you know, I kind of had a stage where I was just, yeah, really kind of nutting out some of the details of, you know, what, what it would take for me to, you know, um, be, be suitable for someone who I'm looking for. Um, and that really pointed me back, pointed me into a journey that is exactly what this is talking about, of, you know, being a man who is worthy of, of her affections, a man who can be the sure anchor of his home. You know, that means, you know, being able to be a provider, being able to, to be a spiritual anchor as well. Um, and just that kind of, you know, that stage of, of growth that I'm entering into now. Um, another thing is just, you know, fear not, she will be sufficient help for you. Mm. So, you know, one of the, the ways that I um, you know, am engaged in ministry is through writing and recording music. Uh, and I have a YouTube channel where, where I post some of that. We will put the links below so you can go check that out. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, yeah, I, I've, I've been kind of, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what role, um, you know, my, my kingdom wife will, will play in that. And I think this is really just God telling me not to worry about that, mm. that he, he will bring me a helper who is a good enough helper for me. You know, mm. I, 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 that's not, these details are not things that I have to stress and worry about. Yeah, because I think you were saying at one point you thought maybe she would be more engaged in music in mm. specific ways, but now where are you sitting with that? You just d don't know and you don't need to know. Pretty much that, yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Hmm. All right. Um, yeah, and I think another thing I want to kind of, you know, bring up is, like, the, the metaphor of, like, both hands to the plough. Mm. Like, you know, Jesus talks a lot about, um, you know, the service of God and building the kingdom mm -hmm. with, with farming metaphors. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of something that, that we kind of gloss over a little bit at times, but farming is manual labour. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's hard work. It's, it's not fun. <laughs> it, it, it's not sitting around in the cloud playing a harp, waiting for, for the right person to float on by. You know, it, it's, it's getting out there and, and doing the real stuff. Mm. Um, and I feel like, for me, the application of both hands to the plough means, you know, one hand for ministry but one hand for work as well. Okay. Because I, the, the way that God is calling me in life is not just to be doing full-time ministry but to be doing, you know, full-time or part-time work at the moment, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to be playing out, but I will be, you know, working a regular job to earn money generating and support myself, an yep. generating income, support a family, and, you know, with the other hand, to then be serving God mm -hmm. and glorifying Him through um, explicit ministerial mm -hmm. service. And this is the kind of thing that we see in the Bible with, like, mm. Paul, for example, you know, the great apostle, the, the first and greatest missionary of all of the Christian world, you know, yep. he was a tent maker. Um, all of his family, yeah. all of his brothers were taught a trade, but they were also sent to theological seminary, right? So he was able to support himself every city he went to by making tents out of camel hair and then also preach when he had some free time. So mm. it's a really important biblical principle for us to, you know, not always just expect money to drop out of the sky when we're doing work for God. So, mm. yeah. One thing I'd just like to invite you guys to do is comment below what stage that you think you might be in in your journey of waiting. Are you in the stage where you don't know what's going on or are you in the stage where you're starting to figure out kind of what you might like or are you in the stage now where you've been through that and now it's time for you to start developing yourself to be a worthy person for that spouse when they come along? Mm. Okay. Um, now, did you want to talk a bit more about discernment? So it means like, you know, determining between right and wrong, between, you know, good and evil spirits as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, you know, I, I, I've you know, read, read some stories about people who thought they were getting messages from God, but these were 
leading them to sin, led them to commit crimes, led them to murder people. Mm. And it really just kind of, you know, opened my eyes to the fact that the devil is very much out there trying to deceive mm. people. He's a liar and the father of lies, and he's definitely still out there today. Before you go on, I actually want to point something out. In the Bible, we get a, a few different lists of gifts of the Spirit, and one of those mm. gifts of the Spirit is the the gift of discernment, discerning of spirits. And um, this gift isn't just special to one or two people who are just pastors or who are just leaders of the church or anything. No, the Holy Spirit gives the gifts of the Spirit to everyone who He chooses and in the measure that they need. So mm. if you feel like you need the gift of discernment, you need to be able to tell the difference between right and wrong. And if you're going through this process of trying to figure out who you're going to marry and, and if that's from God, you need this. So you need to be asking, hey, God, can you please give me this gift of discernment and, and give me wisdom right now and help me to know if this is you speaking or if this is myself or if this is the enemy. So, mm. yeah, just a, I want to encourage you, you guys with that. You can actually access this discernment just by asking for it, okay? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and we also need to remember that whenever we're, you know, consider, thinking about and considering you know, the, the ways that the enemy is working against us, we need to remember that God is sovereign Lord. He is more powerful. He, he has the victory. He's already defeated death on the cross. Mm. So when, when we trust in him, it's not something we need to worry about, but we do need to be aware of, of what's going on mm. and make sure that we're trusting in him. Yeah. yeah. So can you give us a couple of stories, maybe, for examples of mm -hmm. how discernment has played a role in the past you know, couple of years of your journey? Mm. Okay, so, so one example of a, a you know, message that, that I got that was kind of like a, a spiritual message, like a thought that just kind of you know, burst into my mind and I thought, oh, that wasn't for me, cool, um, was just this idea of basically looking for a, a spouse based on you know, her wearing a specific colour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember the story. In, in, in hindsight, it just seems so, so silly but um can can you give us a few more details of the story as it happened and how it played as, out? as it happened so, so this was you know probably like a um a, a few maybe like a couple months but before i ended up meeting this particular girl the the first day that i went to this church um i, I was just kind of like you know praying in the car like you know look there's there's like all these kind of like things i'm trying to like figure out like um you know what what's what's the most important thing to look for and then you I just, you know, remind, remember this, this message of like, you know, she'll be wearing this color. And, um, you know, then, then I, you know, I was like, all right, they went to church, you know, met someone at the door and then went in and sat down. And then I realized that this person I met at the door was wearing that color. Mm -hmm. um, and then like immediately, I felt this very certain voice in my head saying, no, no, no. It's not the one. <laughs> yeah. And yet, and yet, <laughs> we had a conversation shortly after that. Yeah. Um, and this is where I have to be a little bit embarrassed because uh, Mitch was telling me, you know, oh, you know, I was looking out for somebody wearing this particular color because it was one of the criteria that I've received along the way in the past few months or whatever in this process of receiving revelation or, or, you know, engaging in this process. Mm. And then this is, you know, what I was looking out for. I met this person and I got really excited for him. I'm like, yay, he's found the one. And he's like, no, I'm, I don't know. And I was like, no, obviously it is. And he had somebody else like he was talking about as well. That was a potential person. Do you remember that? Mm. And I was like, nah, nah, she's not it. This, this one wearing that color, that's the one. And because I was very enthusiastic about all this stuff and I was just a little bit carried away um and Mitch didn't really give me the the strongest terms of the thought in his head like this is not it like no mm. um because he listened to my voice over over the voice of the Holy Spirit um what happened after that um long story short that didn't pan out yeah so I kind of yeah. tried to go down that road for a while. I, I, I developed some some pretty strong feelings that, um, yeah, then ended up, you know, not really um, coming to anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was a little bit discouraged at first, but then over time just got kind of like revealed to me through reflecting on, on the circumstances that th this doesn't sound like how, how, God, how God works. Um, 
I think, you know, what, one, one important universe to remember is, you know, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Mm -hmm. um, you know... <laughs> the outward clothes of what colour yeah, they are. Yeah, <laughs> not, 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 not even, like, you know, like, physical characteristics, <laughs> but, like, just whatever clothes they happen to be wearing that day. Like, <laughs> people have free will. Like, mm. th this is such a... a weak measure by, by which to kind of, you know, connect to people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also, like, it um, took away the, the, the possibility to, to grow in the virtue of patience as well, um, to kind of, like, you know, get to a church and, and first day before, you know, really kind of, like, you know, connecting with the community, before going to, you know, see people in a, I guess, like a, a unbiased light, unbiased by, you know, um, you know, attaching all these feelings and expectations. Yep to someone to kind of, you know, to, to have like a bit more um, reasonable um, approach to kind of, you know, evaluate someone. The, the right way is that be able to have like, you know, some, some more rationality to have like, you know, reasons for stuff. Mm -hmm. um, my goal wants us to, to love us with all his mind among, as well as all our heart and, and yeah. you know, whatever, like. Yeah, a lot of people um, are being led by the spirit, right? Um, and. I've noticed this a lot in our community here on YouTube that there'll be a message from somebody who claims they're a prophet and there'll be this particular thing to look out for or, you know, you're waiting on something, you're watching for something physical um, to give an indication of if this person is, you know, the right one or whatever. And it's, it's kind of like just chasing the wind a bit. Like, it's not real and it's not God speaking. Um, and I like what you're saying, you know, God wants us to love him with our whole heart, our whole mind, our whole strength. Like we need to be reasonable um, and, and not just be led by every wind of doctrine or anything mm. like that. We actually need to go logically and rationally like, hey, is this what you're actually speaking to me? Does this make sense? And there's, there's a fine line between faith and just crazy. <laughs> okay. So mm. I just want to bring some balance back into that. There's been mm. a lot of unbalanced conversation around this for a while. So mm. thank you for that. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and faith is absolutely a part of it. Mm. Um, you know, as much as this situation wasn't um, God's perfect plan for me, he still used it to grow my faith, even in spite of the fact that, that I was, you know, being, being led astray. God still grew me through, through that situation. Mm. Okay. Um... Can, can we just touch on a few of the different ways that you, like, so you received some trailers from people in real life, mm. but you also had a few dreams? Um, yes. Yeah. So so God spoke to you through dreams. How did all that play out? So one dream, uh, so I was basically just kind of like, you know, met this girl just kind of as, as, a, as a part of going about my life. Like, this is like within the dream. And, um, you know, she kind of, like, stood out to me for being, like, kind of, like, smart and, you know, engaged and switched on with stuff. But, you know, I didn't have any feelings for her. And then just kind of over time, um, you know, we would just kind of be, like, hanging out, just, like, wandering around the shops together, just the two of us. And, you know, wandering around the shop where we could apparently, like, get, like, cups of tea. Um, Mitch loves tea. I, I love tea. <laughs> so if, if a girl drinks tea with me, like, that's a good, that's a, a, a good match. <laughs> But also, um, yeah, and just kind of like through, through this interactions with this girl in the dream, I just felt more and more drawn to her until there came a point where, where I was just kind of like, you know, walking along beside her and I was just like, I just really want to hold her right now. I just really feel, feel drawn to her in this romantic way that I hadn't yet re realised. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it just kind of pointed me to, to a relationship that wasn't, you know, all like, you know, immediate fireworks and love at first sight and all this kind of stuff that Hollywood loves to glorify, but instead more of like a, a calm, quiet, steady, growing love mm. um, that's kind of like a, a stable thing that, um, yeah, it, it is more, more, of a, more of a process than the moment. Okay. All right. I like that. Like, mm. emphasising that stability for the long term. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And how it will continue to grow and deepen. For sure. Yeah. Oh, if if you want to find someone who, who, who you want to marry for life, then, you know, don't evaluate that on such a small sliver of your of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, any other dreams that you want to share and um, you learnt from them? 
Yep, and another dream. So I knew that I was, you know, working alongside uh, like a whole group of other people in some kind of uh, ministerial capacity. We were doing some kind of like video production, and we were sitting around, you know, on like a bunch of like assorted couches in like this circle, maybe like twenty-ish people, maybe a bit less, but you know, like a, a decent group of people. And there, there was something that was just, you know, blocking us, not going right for us in this creative endeavor we were engaging with and different people were voicing their opinions and trying to figure things out but nothing was quite you know the solution that we were looking for that we were waiting for uh i didn't have much to contribute myself but there was this um this girl in the corner who hadn't spoken yet and her friend kind of dobbed her in and was like you know this girl would like to share something and she she spoke and i don't remember any of the particular words but she just spoke so eloquently and clearly about what the problem was and what the solution was and we're just like oh we know exactly what's going wrong we know exactly what to do about it and it was a really powerful answer to the uh situation that you know, as a group we were working through and then later on in that dream um like another kind of scene i guess was we were around this um like Jeep. Um, uh, I was sitting in, in the back seat. I think there was someone else sitting beside me. There are two guys sitting in the front and this girl was like hanging out like on the, in the back of the ute or like staying beside it. I don't know. She was, I just know that she was behind me and out of sight and largely out of mind at the start of this. And at the start of this, these two guys in front were just basically just speaking discouragement about this project and you kind of like saying like, you know, all these, these this isn't going to work out. You know, this, this is a problem that we can't get through. You know, all this is you're not going not to play out nicely. And um, I didn't really have any way to argue against that and mm -hmm. just kind of bought into the, these words that they were saying. Mm -hmm. um, and But then the this girl spoke up and was basically just laying into them, just being like, you're wrong about this, 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 and this, just like really like, like not laying in, in like an aggressive sense, but in like a, I imagine, I imagine it has been similar to what Jesus would have done when he was in the temple courts, you know, turning over the money changes tables because it had become a den of thieves. Mm. It, it was a, a sort of, you know, righteous anger that wasn't, you know, expressed in, in hate or um, mm. a raised voice, but just kind of like, you know, a calm and say, just like, no, this is wrong. Yeah. Um, in a, like a powerful kind of way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was really just like exposing the lies for mm -hmm. what they were. Okay. Um, and it, I, I think it was at this point that I recognized the faces of these two guys in front as being um, Judas and um, his friend from the Chosen series. Oh, wow. If any of you have watched that in, yeah. in season two, spoiler alert, you meet, you meet Judas. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the faces of these two guys were Judas and his friend mm -hmm. from this series, which kind of you know, put the pieces together that like, okay, these, these people were, were not agents of good in this situation. Yeah, yeah. And so w what I saw through, through the, um, through the character of this girl in this dream was someone who was, you know, very powerful and very knowledgeable and, um, and very talented. But then something I noticed, you know, maybe like a few months later was that in this dream, I did not have feelings for this girl. Mm. I was not drawn to her. There, there have been a number of, of dreams where, you know, that there's been, you know, a girl, sometimes she has a name, sometimes she doesn't, mm -hmm. but that's been, you know, some kind of representation of, of God, you know, revealing to me qualities of my, of my future spouse. But in this particular dream about Katrina, there were no feelings there in, in a very notable absence. Um, so my, my interpretation of that at the moment um, is that these are qualities that, aren't things that I need to be actively searching for. These are good things, mm -hmm. these are valuable things, but that, you know, coming back to the previous message of fear not, she will be sufficient help for you, that the the talents and the kind of skills that she has, that, that my future spouse has, are not things that I need to uh, concern myself with about, you know, whether she's talented enough, whether she's gifted enough, but to more focus on the character qualities mm -hmm. and our connection to each other yeah because it's all well and good to have someone who's you know serving god powerfully and passionately in the same field as you but if you can't live together mm. if you can't you know pray together and connect together then you aren't you know then you sh then you aren't fitted to be uh, men and wife you're just fitted to be co-laborers yeah 
and it's and it's and that's not to you know devalue the, the the purpose of that but also to just kind of you know make sure that you correctly understand you know what role this person is in your life yeah. because you know that there are friendships between men and women that god clearly cares about i'd say my friendship with Lindsay is one of those friendships um but then also you know it's important to understand you know what that is and what that isn't mm. and we're kind of you know, journeying together kind of um both put into our separate future spouses and mm. and journeying through that together and uh, learning from each other's experiences mm. and it's just important to just kind of yeah ha have that understanding of you know, just just because you know you're working alongside someone and um you know you you you're good for each other in that respect doesn't necessarily mean that they are a a match for you in a romantic and you know uh, marriage sense yeah mm. that's good thank you for sharing that one but oh, that's all right <laughs> I, think I, I forgot about that one mostly so i'd just like to ask you now like what has your emotional journey been like for the past couple of years on, mm. on this journey? Like, I know that you started, for, for me, the start time of this journey for you was that day when you officially knew that your ex-girlfriend was officially done. Mm. Um, and that I received a phone call that was a little bit, you know, sad. <laughs> so how's it been since then? What was the progression been as you've been waiting and, and journeying mm. and learning about the sentiment and all this kind mm. of thing? So the, the emotional journey ha has its ups and downs for sure. There are moments where I'll just be like, oh yes, you know, I just met a girl that has all these you know, awesome qualities and I'm really excited and I hope she's the one. And then there's moments where, I'm just, where, where I'll just be like, I'm never going to meet the one, you know, no, no one's going to be quite what I'm looking for. Mm. Um, but then God's like, I'm more powerful. You remember that, right? And I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I feel like many of the lowest points are just opportunities to be drawn closer to God and to trust in him more fully, more completely mm. to just kind of say like, look, you know, th these are all the ways that, you know, that I'm kind of, you know, struggling that I don't feel like I'm enough or don't feel like I can figure out where I'm going in this journey. Um, you know, whatever it might be. And, and God just says, Hey, you know, I'm here and I want you to learn more about me in the process and more about why you can trust in me with everything. Because, yeah, God, God is all powerful and he cares about every, every little aspect of our lives, mm. you know. Um, but when we, are, when we are ready and um, when, you know, other external circumstances are ready too, God, God will, will bring you the right thing in the right time. Yeah. And I like that you bring it back to that, that point that God is with you and, and it's all, like, pointing you back to him like no matter mm. what we're going through in our lives whether it's got anything to do with kingdom marriage or if it's got to do with anything else entirely like whatever um it's really important for us to bring our perspective back to or our focus on onto god and jesus and mm. like how is our relationship with him what is he doing what is like what kind of grace is he extending to us in this moment um how is he showing us love when we're feeling lonely or lost or completely confused? Like this is something that I personally experienced a lot in the past couple of years on this journey of like, I would prefer to have a husband right now to give me a hug and make me feel better, but I don't. So I'm going to have to get that from God. And it's really grown and deepened my relationship with God as I have expected all of that comfort that I would probably expect too much of from a spouse and just being able to, I guess, emotionally regulate in that process. Mm. Um, I know I've shared with you a lot recently about a dream that I had about nine months ago mm. about the process that I am going through emotionally and spiritually with the the idea of this person that I expect to marry at, at some point one day. And it started off early in this journey for me with a lot of like explosive big emotions, which in the dream actually were represented by my love for volcanoes and my conversation about volcanoes and all the silica content in the lava flow and everything. Um, and at that point, you know, experiencing a lot of emotions in the dream when other things are happening and then just coming to this point in the dream where my emotions were well regulated mm. and I just actually drank a cup of pink milky tea. I don't know what that is or what that's supposed to be like, but that represented to me like this, this calming of emotions. And once I drank that tea, I was just so, you know, put together that this, this other person who had just rejected me in that moment, um, 
was like, I don't understand how you can be so, you know, calm right now. But this whole process has been, I guess, refining me particularly. I know we're not focusing on Mitch's story right now, but it's, it's, it's a similar situation, like this, this refining of every part of who we are mm. and, um, and this sanctification process, our journey with God in this process making us more like him, giving us more calmness, giving us more peace, a serenity and, and being closer to him, just reflecting his love in every part of who we are and being more filled with his spirit. So um, even though this can be a really hard journey for a lot of us to go on, um, if we engage with the process <laughs> um, and not completely just give up halfway through because it's too hard, we might actually find ourselves a lot more peaceful in the end as we rely on him a lot more. Mm. Is that what you found? Yeah. There, there's a lot of confusion along the way. There's a lot of loneliness. There's a lot of just, um, yeah, just, just struggles that we have to go through. But I think an important lesson that God wants to learn us through that is that first and foremost, our connection with him comes first mm. before our connection with the spouse, before our connection with others in the world. And if we, if he isn't a sufficient refuge for us, then how is a human going to be good enough for us? Right? Like mm. if we, if we can't find our, our comfort in God during, during these times, then, you know, we, we aren't going to be doing justice to the person that he brings alongside us. Yeah. We, we need to have that, that connection and that comfort in him mm. right first. Yeah, I want to talk a bit more about that. Um, so something I've been learning about in the past couple of years is about uh, attachment styles. Have you heard of mm, this? Yeah. Yeah, so some some people have healthy attachment styles and some people have unhealthy attachment styles, and there are a few different types of unhealthy attachment. Um, I know for me, the way that I have been brought up, I naturally have an unhealthy attachment style, and this is something that has needed to be healed and God wants us to have really healthy attachments with him and with whoever he plans us to marry, right? Mm. He doesn't want us to go into a relationship that's going to be toxic and unhealthy and we're just going to want to get out of it as soon as we get into it. So I think this, this long journey of growth and emotional healing and, and going through this process um, is super important for us to, to appreciate and um, not want to get it over and done with immediately. Like this is something that's taken me a long time to figure out that this is probably the best part of the whole journey, to be honest, like becoming a healthy human being so that when I do get into this marriage, it will be a really good one. Mm -hmm. It won't be like my parents or many, many other people out there who, you know, get into a relationship for the wrong reasons or they're just not healthy human beings and they end up getting divorced and then it's just causes more emotional trauma along the way. Like, I want this to be a really good relationship and I'm committed to doing that and so I'm committed to following through with this process. Mm. I don't know, Mitch, that you're also willing to become a better human being. Yeah. And, and provide a good environment for that person that you are going to end up marrying. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so one other thing I've kind of been, you know, growing and um, and developing is that, um, yeah, when I was in my um, you know previous relationship, you know, I, I'd consider my attachment style to be to be reasonably healthy, um, but but one thing that I found while in the relationship was I, I kind of became like super complacent. Mm. I, I just I was I just kind of had this attitude of like, oh, you know, you you put up with me this far, then you know. Like, I, I don't need to change. And, and that's, like, a really unhealthy attitude, especially if you're with someone who you'll be with for the rest of your life. Mm. Um, you know, not saying that you should go into a relationship expecting the other person to change, but you, could also, you should also, you know, not go into a relationship expecting the other person to not grow or change at all, mm. you know, d during your time together. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of having that, that kind of growth mindset mm -hmm. while in a relationship is important rather than just thinking, like, oh, I've, I've arrived and, you know, I don't need to worry about any of this stuff anymore. And I think an, an important thing is that so, it's it's so easy to look for excitement mm. and so easy to, to, to discard healthy. Mm. But ex exciting, you know, ex exciting doesn't last very long. Mm -hmm. ex exciting grows old, but, but healthy, healthy sticks around when you need it. Mm. And 
I, I, I believe that the, God, what, the kind of relationships that God wants for us are healthy relationships. Mm. They might not be exciting all the time. I think he does want, you know, moments of excitement and, and of joy, you know, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. God wants our lives to be filled with joy, but also uh, that's, a, that's not just talking about joy in the moment, but, but a lasting joy. It's not talking about fleeting excitement the way mm. that, you know, Hollywood and media kind of, kind of puts forward because so much of that is very shallow and leaves you empty and God doesn't want to leave us empty. Yeah. So I, I think, yeah, kind of acclimatizing to, to this kind of healthy desire for a healthy relationship, e even if it doesn't, you know, have all the excitement that we might kind of, you know, envisage in our mind, gives us a much more realistic under understanding and expectation of what something that's good for us. Um, you know, in, in Luke 11, when Jesus is talking about how he'll give us the Holy Spirit, he says, you know, which one of you, if you ask for, um, you know, bread, will, 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 will give them a stone, you know, or you know, if you ask for a fish, we'll give them a snake. But I think there are many times where we'll ask God for a snake and he'll want to give us a fish and he just has to kind of like wait for us to, to take the fish, you know. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Yeah, we want something dangerous and exciting. He's like, mm. Mm, rather not, if if we can avoid that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like that. That's good. Um, did you at any point along the way mm. have like a specific prayer where you were like, God, I want your will for my life now? I don't think I had a specific moment where, mm. where I said that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, that kind of like the... Um, I guess kind of like the, the, the go point for, for, for this journey was, you know, when, yeah, you know, my, my previous relationship was like, you know, fully like, you know, dead in the water, you know, th this is not a recoverable situation. Um, and God's like, I got you now. Mm -hmm. And it was more, more a matter of, you know, me just kind of accepting that and submitting to that mm -hmm. rather, rather than, you know, um, desiring that. Yeah. It, it, it was like, it's like ra rather than you know me reaching out for it, it's more like God put it right in front of me when I was in in a moment where I couldn't reach very far. Right. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that there's there a particular moment where I just kind of said like you know God, this is in your hands. But it's just through through this experience, it was just kind of like like an, an unspoken agreement that was yeah. that was very much still an agreement. Okay. Cool. Very good. Is there anything else that you want to share? Mm -hmm. I think just kind of a, a, a good general message to keep in mind is just because this person is cute and pretty doesn't mean you have to justify that, that she's the right one for you or that he's the right one for you, you know. J just because someone's attractive and, and all these feelings are going on doesn't mean that, that this is right. Mm. Doesn't mean you need to, you know, give in to that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good one. I think probably a lot of us have maybe come to that conclusion along the way at some point in this journey. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing um, all no of your worries. wisdom and your learning. So just, just to be clear, um, Mitch is also still, he doesn't know the end of his story yet. Um, still figuring it out um, just like I am. And <laughs> we've got different types of stories, but similar point in the journey, mm. I think. <laughs> Um, and I have, I have a few other friends who are similarly in the middle of it all and don't know what's going on. And I feel like there's a lot of us out here that just don't know what ha what's happening. So I really hope that um, the insights that he's had to share and um, what we've, we've been discussing today, that it's been helpful for you, uh, maybe to give you some clarity, give you a bit of language around what you're going through. Um, mm. And maybe, um, yeah, maybe just pray about some of the stuff that you've heard today. Um, maybe go back and listen to it again and jot down some notes and, and think through and, and pray, hey, God, is any of this applicable to me? Mm. Is there any point um, in this, like, where am I on this journey? Where am I in the process of waiting? How am I going with discerning the people and the messages around me, the messages that are coming to me that feel very spiritual and they're not my own, you know, are they actually from you? Are they from Satan? Are they just my imagination? Like mm. these are some really important questions to ask ourselves. And I know having gone through this process myself, um, 
that these are really tough questions to engage with and sometimes you don't want to because it's too hard to to face sometimes but I really encourage you for your own peace of mind um, to engage with the process and allow God to grow you and just grow closer to him um, as he is, is taking you through this to sanctify you and to make you more like he is. Um, that's really it for today. I also want to encourage you to check out um, Mitch's social media. Um, we'll be putting the links down in the description below. So make sure you go um, say hi to him and like and subscribe and all those things. You know what to do. Thank you. It has been a pleasure hanging out with you guys today and with you also, Mitch. Thank you for joining me here. Um, I'll see you guys again next Friday.